Thank you, Chairman, committee. My name is Monty Exter. Uh, I am here in favor of the bill uh, with ATPE and as another one of the um, subcommittee leaders for the workforce that the Lieutenant Governor's Office put together. <coughs> Primarily here today just to answer any questions if you might have as a resource witness. Um, Tim covered most of what the workforce wanted to present. Um, I did want to say uh, that some of the work that my particular subcommittee did. About Senate uh, Bill 7. Uh, streamlining. The left, the, the Democrats, the many in the media, the some in this room maybe, uh, across the state, across the country in the media, science, uh, social studies and ELAR. have changed the word, sadly, to the legislature over the from years voter to security to voter suppression. Code provisions around training on those requirements. So or voter restriction, where as I read in the Texas Tribune. I think you're here today, subject. Kathy. We, uh, Consolidated those Senate Bill 7 is about voter security, voter not about voter suppression. And I'm tired of the lies and, we also had a and the nest of liars who continue to repeat um, them. Deal with frequency, and I'm happy to Nothing has changed in the election code regarding early voting. Nothing has changed. We have more early voting than New York or New Jersey, which proudly added nine days yesterday. So they're up to nine. Or eight states, including Delaware, the home state of the president, that do not have early voting. So if somehow we're accused of being racist because we want to suppress the vote of people of color, I guess New York and New Jersey and Delaware are even more racist. Nothing has changed about election day voting in the election code. Mail-in ballots for seniors and people with disabilities has actually been loosened up under current law until SB 7 passes under current law to verify a signature you have to have two signatures dating back to six years we've now required only one signature moving forward that can go back longer than six years because people's signatures change over time so I want to repeat this nothing has changed for mail-in ballots election day or early voting. And anyone who says different is lying to you, whether they write with a pen, talk with a microphone, or hold political office. We've heard it all before. In 2011, when I was in the Senate, I was one of the joint authors with other Republicans of the photo voter ID bill. And we heard it then. If you require someone to have a photo ID, you're going to suppress the turnout. People of color don't have photo voter IDs. That's what was said. You know, time and time again, Democrats have put down their own voters as if somehow they're incapable. As Republicans, I believe everyone, black, white, and brown, are very capable and very smart. And so what's happened since we passed photo voter ID in 2011? In 2012, there were 7.9 million Texans who voted for president. Total turnout, 7.9 million. In 2020, we had 11.1 million, nearly a 40% increase in voter turnout in presidential elections since they said the sky was falling. We're going to suppress the vote. In gubernatorial elections, it's even more amazing. In 2011, they said this will suppress the vote. Can't have photo voter IDs. That's not fair. The turnout in gubernatorial elections from 2014 to 2018 has increased almost 75 percent. When Greg Abbott and I ran in 2014, the turnout was just a little under 5 million. And in 2018, it was over 8 million. Another outstanding fact. In 2012, the total number of people who voted, who were registered to vote, was about 58%. In 2020, it was 66.7%. Look up the numbers, media. Do your homework. I haven't seen this story told anywhere. Texas has had one of the biggest increases in voter turnout, voter participation. 
of any state in the country, all under Republican leadership. I listened to that press conference in Houston yesterday, and one of the speakers commented, this has all been under Republican leadership. I'm proud of what we have done as Republicans when it comes to voting. We have secured the vote and increased the turnout. I've been asked, why is this bill needed? Very simple. The bill is needed because Americans no longer trust the system. In a country where voters do not trust the system is a country in peril, particularly when you're a republic, when you're a democracy. This didn't happen in the past. People didn't cry foul about elections in the past, no matter if their candidate won or lost. It didn't happen in 08 with Obama. It didn't happen in 12. It didn't happen before that. But in 2016, it began. The Democrats, including their candidate for the White House, never accepted the vote in 2016. Hillary Clinton said for four years that the election was stolen from her. And she got a lot of people to believe it. And in 2020, there's a large percentage of Americans who do not believe in the outcome of this election. I'm not going into 16 or 20. I'm making the point that people in America have lost faith in their elections, in the outcome. And we have to resolve that issue in this country and in this state. And that's why Senate Bill 7 is needed. Remember, and let me repeat this for the media and for the Democrats so they'll stop lying about it. We have not changed any dates on early voting. It still starts two weeks before the election, 12 days of early voting. We have not changed mail-in voting for seniors or people who are disabled. We've made it easier because the signature verification is now one signature for a longer period than two signatures for six. And in polling places, I've heard Democrats talk about that. Well, we're reducing the polling places. No, we're not. We're standardizing the polling places so that polling places are based on eligible voters, and eligible voters are people 18 and over. That's how it should be, Republicans and Democrats. Very simple. How can you argue with that? Your polling places depend on the number of eligible voters. In 2017, we ended straight ticket voting. We heard that again. You're suppressing the vote. People of color won't go down ballot. It's unfair. What happened in 2020, the first election that we didn't have straight ticket voting? And by the way, only, I think, seven states still have it. What happened? Turnout set a record, and people went down ballot, Republicans and, and, and Democrats. In fact, this is very interesting. This is how smart the voters are, whether they're white, black, or brown. I believe in voters. There are two districts in the valley that Donald Trump turned and won in the valley. But the two representatives down there, the Democrats in the House, guess what? The people voted for Trump and they went down ballot and voted for the Democrats who represent them. In other words, they were able to distinguish in their mind the people they wanted to vote for. One was a Republican, one was a Democrat. And there were two districts in the Dallas area where voters did not vote for Donald Trump but went down ballot and voted for the two Republicans. Has the media reported that? No. Straight ticket voting, photo voter ID voting, Senate Bill 7, we've heard it all before. You're suppressing the vote. You're hurting people of color. I'll tell you how people of color are hurt. When Major League Baseball pulls the All-Star game out of Georgia, the city of Atlanta is 51% black. They moved it to Denver. Denver is 9% black. Major League Baseball just hurt people of color. And Colorado has basically the same voting laws as Georgia. I'm focused on Texas, but this is what happens when you get professional sports teams and corporate America involved in policy that they've never read and don't understand. American Airlines had the audacity to call our office and speak to my chief of staff last week and say, we just want you to know that this is not personal 
against the lieutenant governor or the governor, but we're going to come out and oppose the bill, Senate Bill 7. And my chief of staff said, well, have you read the bill? And the government relations person said, no, no, I haven't read the bill. How about the CEO of American Airlines? Has he read the bill? Nope, he hasn't read the bill. So you're calling us to tell us this isn't personal against Lieutenant Governor or the governor or the 18 members who voted for the bill? But you haven't read the bill? And you're calling us out for suppressing the vote? Well, let me tell you what, Mr. American Airlines, I take it personally. You're questioning my integrity and the integrity of the governor and the integrity of the 18 Republicans who voted for this. When you suggest that we're trying to suppress the vote, you are, in essence, between the lines, calling us racist, and that will not stand. That will not stand. You're right to your opinion, but at least read the bill. You're right to come and testify against it if you don't like it but at least read the bill. But don't come out like American Airlines has and other companies and Major League Sports and call a bill voter suppression, that it will hurt people of color when you haven't even read the bill. That's not acceptable. And all of these businesses in Texas, you know, it used to be where you came to the legislature to talk about policy that may have impacted your business. Regulations, financial issues, tax issues. Stick to that. Because let me tell you something. You keep meddling in issues that people have elected Republicans or Democrats to address. You keep meddling in these issues without any understanding or even reading bills, and you're turning off 50% or more of your potential customers. You've meddled in a lot of issues lately. I'm not a big believer in boycotts, but people will make up their own minds. Stay out of things you don't know anything about, and if you want to get involved, then you're taking that risk. You have a right to your opinion, but read the damn bill before you give one. And don't insult us. Well, this is not a, we don't want you to take this personally. You know why they said that? Because they might come down the street next session and have a bill they want us to pass for them. Good luck. We'll treat them fairly like we always would. But as Governor Abbott said on Fox earlier this morning, we have brought a lot of businesses to Texas. And they come here because we're the best state to do business in. But if they think they're going to attack the legislature on issues they have no knowledge about and come to us with their hand out, Well, that's just not going to be the way we do business. We offer incentives to businesses that come here. Many come here. Many come here without them. But don't on one hand say thank you, Texas, and on the other hand slap us in the face. We're not going to put up with it anymore. We're going to talk about racism. I've grown up in this country. I turned 71 this week. I grew up in the 60s. I saw it. Our country has moved so far ahead with so many more things to do. But I feel that there are people in this country that are trying to do everything they can to divide us on every issue. No matter what the Republicans oppose or support, the Democrats yell, and the left yells, and many in the media yell, well, it's racism, your position on the border, or health care, or education, or vaccine rollout. And now, a voter security bill. Americans are tired of it. White, black, and brown, they see through it. They see through it. When that's all you can say, then you have no argument. We have to heal this nation. And we can't heal this nation if people cry racism on every issue, at every turn. What's the end game in all of that? Short-term gain, maybe it helps you win an election. Long-term divisiveness in this country. You know, I hate to quote Charles Barkley, but he is a pretty colorful character. I knew him a little bit 
when he played with the Houston Rockets. Not a friend. But Charles said the other night on the game, something that I believe in. He said, I believe most white people and most people of color are great people. And I agree. And he blamed a lot of this divisiveness on politicians. And I agree. That's not who we are, Mr. American Airlines, in the Texas Senate or the Texas House, or in the governor's office. That's not who we are. This is a good bill to help secure the vote so people can have confidence in the outcome of elections in Texas. Now, there's been some questions about three issues, dealing with 24-hour voting and drive-in voting and sending ballots to everyone. Well, I have news for Harris County. You're not the capital of Texas. The state capitol resides in Travis County, in the city of Austin, in this building, not in the county judge or the mayor's office. Harris County does not make policy and create law for the other 253 Texas counties. Out of thin air, they decide it on drive-in voting. Now, there was a case file. The judge threw it out on lack of standing, but the judge said in the case, had I opined, I would have said it was unlawful. Because the Constitution says a voting location must be a building. A tent is not a building. And if they're worried about people of color in the Democrat side who came up with this drive-in voting, statistics show that more people of color don't have cars than not. So how'd they help those folks? And remember, when you vote, you don't take three or four people in with you. It's privacy of the ballot. If you vote in a car and there's three or four people in the car, it's just handing the Slate around. And by the way, would the media report this, that there's still 7,000 votes from those drive-in voting centers that have not been resolved, that there's a wrong count with the Secretary of State? Will you all do your work and kind of figure that out? I mean, it was about 15% of all the early votes. 24-hour vote. Once again, they pulled out of thin air. That's not in state law. They just made it up. It's hard to secure it's hard enough getting poll watchers for Democrat campaigners and Republican campaigners and volunteers to run all the election precincts and polling places as it is. Not that many people voted. And in Senate Bill 7, we actually expand voting till 9 p.m. The idea that we're cutting back on hours, another lie. We require the counties of 100,000 or more have at least 12 hours. But we've said you can now keep your polling places open till 9 p.m. if they choose to. With 24-hour voting, people have plenty of time to vote. Again, we're not repealing a law. It was something that Harris County made up on their own. And then there was this issue of sending ballots out to everyone. People say, well, well Dan, why, why wouldn't you want to send a ballot to everyone out there? Because people move. People die. Ballots go to homes and apartments where the voter no longer lives. What's the one question they asked you when you go to vote? I bet no one here in the media can answer the question. What's the one question they asked you? Is this your current address? Addresses aren't always updated. So you have thousands or millions of votes potentially going out to homes where the people have died or have moved. Our law is simple. You request a mail-in ballot, we send you the form, you get it. No one complained about that before. It's worked very well. But again, Harris County. Thank God Harris County is not the capital of Texas. Because all the other 253 counties would have been shut down like Harris County was to business. And Texas would be like California and New York if Harris County was in charge. And criminals would be running rampant on the street because in Harris County they can't keep people charged with serious crimes in jail. The judges just let them out. We'd have crime all over the state if Harris County were in charge. So what is, before I take your questions, what does Senate Bill 7 do? S Senate Bill 7 requires a paper backup for every ballot. Mr. American Airlines, are you okay with that? I just want to check. 
Media okay with that? Paper ballot? Sound good? Consistent rules statewide will ensure Texas continues to be able to count our ballots on time. Mr. American Airlines, are you okay with that? Media, are you okay with that? I mean, we don't want to be Pennsylvania and Georgia and other states that took days and weeks to count their ballots. We had pretty much all ours counted by election night. We want to keep it that way. Both parties agree mail-in ballots are the ones susceptible to fraud. Here's a quote from a friend of mine, former Senator Jose Rodriguez, 2017. This is his quote. I strongly believe we must address mail-in ballot fraud. That's Jose Rodriguez, 2017. Now, he didn't like the bill we passed, but he acknowledged mail-in ballot fraud is a problem. The other night in the debate, one of the senators, one of the Democrats on the floor said, Senator Hughes, why do we need this bill? We have less ballot fraud than we used to have. Really? So how much did we used to have, Senator? How much did we used to have? How much do we have now? You said it's less. How much is less? Ballot, mail-in ballot fraud is so hard to catch and to prove. But Democrats and Republicans alike know it exists. And that's why we have to secure our mail-in ballots. Senate Bill 7, ballots will actually go to voters who currently live at the address, the point I was making. Is that okay with you, Mr. American Airlines? and the media? Does that sound like voter suppression? Senate Bill 7, disabled voters who vote curbside will have the same protections of privacy as people who vote in person. Is that okay with you, Mr. American Airlines? Did you know that was in the bill? All communications with election machine vendors will be subject to open record request. Is that okay with you, Mr. American Airlines? I can name other companies, but American Airlines seems like leading the charge on these types of issues. Anyone in the media object us making sure we have transparency dealing with any voting machine vendors? No voting machine can be connected to the internet because we're concerned about hacking. Companies like American Airlines and Dell and others spend millions, hundreds of millions of dollars to protect from people hacking their computers. We don't want our voting machines hacked, so they cannot be machines that use the Internet. Is that okay with you, Mr. American Airlines, and the media? No vote totals can change once the actual votes are cast. What does that mean? Because when you take these disks out, we want to be sure that these disks cannot be rewritten. They come out of the machine with the vote totals. Is that okay with you, Mr. American Airlines and media? Counties over 100,000 will be required to live stream their counting process. Is that okay, Mr. American Airlines and media? And I know there was a question about polling places, and I addressed that before about our polling places in Senate Bill 7 are now based on eligible voters. In other words, everyone 18. That's how many polling places you get. Do you know when Harris County, again, we don't want them running the state because they're doing a really poor job of running their own county. But when they set up the drive-in vote polling places, guess what? In the largest Republican precincts, they had two drive-in locations. In the largest Democrat precinct, which was smaller than the Republican, they had five. And that's why we have to address that in Senate Bill 5, because Local officials, maybe Republicans, maybe Democrats, might just want to play with the numbers a little bit to put more voting locations that favor them than the other party. We don't want that to happen from either side. Bottom line is, to Texans and to Americans, we must stop this race baiting on every issue. Election security is what the public wants. Over 70 5% support photo voter ID, which Congress wants to eliminate, by the way. Voters want confidence in their election system. Senate Bill 7 is not voter suppression, it's voter security. And if Beto and Castro and Turner and Hidalgo and all these other folks out there protesting with their fists in the air that this is voter suppression, they're lying to you. Let them point it out in the bill.
Are there some things in the bill they don't like? Yeah, I got it. All legislation is like that. We took some Democrat amendments, as a matter of fact, on the bill. But Senate Bill 7 is about voter security. And all of us in America, all of us in office, all of us in the media, all of us in corporate America need to take a step back and think about what we say and what it means and how it affects our country and our state. Question. As Senator Rodriguez said, I strongly believe, he didn't say I believe, he said I strongly believe in 2017. I strongly believe. Now he didn't vote for the bill in 2017, but he said I strongly believe we must address mail-in ballot fraud. We need as close to zero tolerance as we can get on people casting ballots they shouldn't cast. I'm not talking about 2020. I'm not talking about 2020, 2016. Democrats and Republicans have different views on those elections. I'm talking about Texas, I'm talking about now. I'm talking about 2011, when everyone made the same argument. Why do you need voter ID? We don't have any voter fraud. You're gonna suppress the vote. You heard my numbers, they increased dramatically. 76% gubernatorial, almost 40% for presidential. They said the same thing in 2017. We need a secure and safe voting system. Don't you want your bank to be secure? You don't, do you want them to protect all of your money or just some of your money? Is it okay for someone to hack in and steal 10% of what you have or 5%? Or do you want all 100% of your money to be protected at your bank? That's how we should look at voting. No, uh, not to my knowledge. Uh, American Airlines, I don't know who came up with the idea of let's call the Lieutenant Governor office and tell him this isn't personal or, and let him know the, tell the Governor it's not personal, but we're coming out against your bill. And then also telling us you haven't read it. I don't know who came up with that idea, but they ought to fire that guy. I can't think of anything really more offensive. They give, they, give, they give donations. A lot of your big corporations give donations to Democrats and Republicans because they play both sides of the street because they want to be sure they're covered on who wins. So, so who's like you money, so I couldn't care less who gives me money. And if this means some of my so, – and corporations can't give money, as you know. You cannot take corp, corporate donations. I couldn't care less. What I care about is a secure election in Texas. I care about ending this constant – divisive talk about racism every day, everywhere, on every issue. What I care about is stopping professional sports teams and companies from getting involved in issues they know nothing about. Major League Baseball ought to be embarrassed. I don't know what the Georgia law is. I've read about it. Don't know if that's all true. I can't trust everything I read. But Major League Baseball and the players, or well, the players union, and there are a lot of my People of color play Major League Baseball. I wonder how they feel that 50% of black people in Atlanta had the game taken from them to send it to Denver where only 9% of people are black. You think that helped anybody who's black or brown? This is what happens when the media doesn't give the facts. This is what happens when you let people lie. Anything I said here today, hold me to it. Everything I said today is true. Every fact I gave you is correct. And if I'm off a number and I misspoke, I'll correct it. But I'm confident of everything I told you today is correct. Yeah, I watched that press conference yesterday in Houston. They didn't talk about one thing in the bill. One, one or two things about, you know, about one or two issues they didn't like. But on voter suppression, they couldn't, they couldn't make the point because it doesn't exist in the bill. Any other questions? Yes. This is not a quid pro quo. We don't punish people because they disagree with us. What I'm, what I'm saying is that for corporate 
for corporations in Texas who bask in the greatness of the Texas worker and bask in a state with no income taxes and bask in a state with light regulation and have grown their businesses dramatically and they're moving here from everywhere because they're being taxed out of blue states or overly regulated then you come here and you want to criticize us, I'm fine with the criticism. If the, if the CEO of American Airlines wanted to call up and say, you know, Dan, I don't like this part about the bill. I'm sending someone down to testify against it. But when they call you and tell you, don't take this personally, but we're opposing the bill, and they list out the reasons which, which I think are borderline charges of racism from them, that's not acceptable. It's not going to stand, and I'm going to call them out for it, and so is Governor Abbott, and so are, so are Republicans. We're not going to put up with this nonsense anymore. Corporate America, corporate America does not run this country. I know big tech likes to think they do. The people of the country run the country. I got elected with somewhere 4 million voters, whatever it was last time. I represent 4 million voters. I don't represent the CEOs or the people on the board at these companies. If they want to support me, great. If they want to support the Democrat, great. If they don't want to support anybody as individuals. I couldn't care less. You know, it's amazing to me. The Democrats used to be, they said, the party of the people. They've become the party of big tech and big business. And they don't give a hoot about their voters. They don't give a hoot about the black and brown people that they represent, along with their white voters. They don't give a hoot. The Republicans, we were, used to be accused of being the party of big business. We were never the party of big business. We we're just smart on business. But we're now the party that represents the people in this state and in this country, white, black, and brown. Look at the results of the 2020 election in the Valley. Donald Trump turned, I believe it was seven counties, from Demo in, a, in an area that's historically minority and historically Democratic. Because they looked at Donald Trump and said, that guy's looking out for me. They're worried about their jobs in the oil and gas industry that the Democrats are just, have destroyed. They're worried about people pouring over the border and bringing crime to their cities and COVID to their cities. I've always thought, I've always been a grassroots person. That's how I got elected. You know, I didn't have any big companies or any lobbyists or anyone else supporting me when I ran in 2007, and few did in 2013 when I ran for lieutenant governor. I've done very well with Hispanic voters. I think in 2014, Greg, Greg Abbott and I set a record for receiving Hispanic report, I think support, I think it was around 50%, all time for Republicans. I value the individual. That's who I listen to. I'm not paying attention to the CEO of a company who says, I haven't read your bill, but I'm against it. Really? Go away. Any other questions? One more. One, and then one more, and then we'll wrap it up. You know, you know, just go, you know, don't ask me a stupid question. I didn't come here to take stupid questions from the media. It's ridiculous, okay? It's ridiculous. I just answered your question. I answered your question, okay? Uh, yes. Uh, that was the mayor of Austin? Oh, golly day. There's Mr. Credibility. I'm in Cabo. Don't leave your house. You know, defund the police, crimes up, people are getting killed. But Austin's safe. I don't pay any attention. Another liberal who's clueless and who hasn't probably read the bill. There's nothing, let me repeat this, there's nothing in the bill about voter suppression. It's all about voter security. Let him point to you where he believes that is. We haven't changed early voting days. Mail-in ballots are the same. We've made it easier for people in signatures. Election day, we're increasing hours to 9 p.m. Um, look, I, I was a longtime member of the media. Things are complex sometimes. That's when you have to dig in, do your homework, check the facts. Thank you all very much. Thank you. Thank you.